Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilaus. This is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game. It aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve. In today's episode, we will optimize essential builds that I'm sure you've built many times, but this one, this will be better. Every base needs green circuits, red circuits, and blue circuits. And I know myself that I've built them many times, but I always wonder, could they be better? So what I've done is I've optimized these builds and I'll present them to you here. I feel that these designs are very versatile as they can be upgraded from early game to mid game to late game. Without further ado, let's dive in. Each episode of the Masterclass starts as a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. It's over at Twitch TV slash Nilos and you're welcome to drop by. These usually happens on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. Feel free to drop by and help decide, design and discuss upcoming guides. Our collaborative designs are always superior to what I could have built myself. If you like this video and want to see more, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have ideas, comments or feedback, you're welcome to leave a comment below or join our Discord server with more than 5,000 members discussing all the games we play here on the channel. Let's dive into the green circuits or electronic circuits as they are actually called. With all of these Factorio masterclasses, it all revolves around a blueprint book. So I've prepared a blueprint book with the designs I'm showcasing and as I'm walking through the designs and explaining how they work. You can find all of these blueprints in the link in the description below. The very first thing you want to do once you have some dedicated smelting in place is to start making some structured green circuits. Because you're going to need green circuits for the green signs and you're going to need it for all of your production needs in your hub. So let's start with the very first setup. Let's put it in and then have our magic robots build it for us quickly. So what we have here is a very basic build. And basically what you can see is that the ratio three wire assemblers to two green circuit assemblers. That is the basic and I have like to these. I have uh, for all of these builds I have included in the blueprint some combinators, they don't do anything except that when you look at the blueprint, you might be in doubt, like, is this copper or is this iron and this is an input and an output. So I have indicated what each line is. You're welcome to remove them afterwards. I'm going to leave it in here. Additionally, I have added this constant combinator. This is available for all my builds. You can see over on the right hand side, you can see the total inputs and outputs. Minus is, of course, inputs and the outputs of the build is there. So this one is producing 12 green circuits per second. It is consuming 12 iron per second and 18 copper per second. So 18 copper per second, I can easily get that in, but I can only get it in on two belts. So let's hook this one up. The reason why I'm using red Undergrounds is simply to cover this. Otherwise, I would have to remove these indicators and I want to keep them here. So now the build is working and you can see that they will balance on each side evenly. There are some kinks and quirks to this that you might be wondering about right now, like this mysterious splitter that doesn't really do anything. And also, likewise, there's two output, but they're not really there. So this one, it's going to be just fine to get started. See, it's producing a bit less than a full belt, 12 outbound less than a full build of 15. Now at some point this will not be sufficient and you want to upgrade. So you're producing 12 circuits per second. And it could be, for example, when you start building solar panels, they will require quite a lot of green circuits. So you might want to upgrade, but you're still in the yellow belt era. So now we upgrade this one to produce two full yellow belts outbound. That's 30 circuits per second. We are putting this one in. I am hooking up the additional lines. As you can see, these additional lines are partial lines. You can bring in one line and split it between these two. In this case, for demonstration purposes, I have simply set two half lines in because that's what it needs. If we look at the inputs and outputs of this build. It now takes, you can see this is how I do it. I first take the line and then I take any subcomponents and make a separate line for it. So this produces 30 circuits per second. Oh, especially if I remember to bring it out as well. 30 seconds. Circuits per second, two full yellow belts. It consumes two yellow belts of iron plates and it consumes three full belts of copper plates. And what happens here, you can see at the very end, this one is kind of running out. This one is kind of running out. 
One thing to note about this design, and this is done for sort of space saving purposes, I am picking up the iron from the side from a splitter here. The reason this is actually a good idea is because now I don't need any long-handed inserters. This takes less space and I think less space is, is a good idea for, for, this, for a bit such as this. When you want to upgrade to red belts, now the red belts have double the capacity. You have two choices. You can either build two of these builds next to each other and merge them together. Then you have two red belts of green circuits or you can extend it. But there's no new tech available that makes things go faster. So when we talk about green circuit builds with red belts, then the only way to scale it up to double the, the production capacity is to scale it up to double the size, which means extending it. Now, the first thing we want to do is, of course, upgrade to red belts. At this point, you probably don't have robots to do this for you, but now it's, it's uh, getting here. You can see that the copper will now easily saturate the belts as it's coming in. And our choice here is, if you want to just double it, make two next to each other, well, that's pretty simple. It's just the same blueprint. You can see the belt here is not full anymore, but what you can do is we can set up a new blueprint, which is gonna be very large. And it's, um, it is the absolute maximum size you can put within a city block, as you can see from here. There is just no additional room. You can slide the whole thing like one tile to the left if you want, but this is contained within a city block if you uh, feel so inclined. You can start seeing this, the belts going down here and they are merging at various locations where it takes the inner belt here that's being transported and starts merging it into the outer belt. And the outer belt is the one that gets consumed. And we look at the outer ones here, the very last ones on the row, you can see that it is fully, it's working but also that the belt is very empty. So it looks perfectly done. The reason, another little quirk here is that I'm inserting directly into a splitter. Inserting into a splitter means that it will actually insert both on the closed belt and the furthest belt. I mean, that means if you insert on, on the splitter, it actually has a much easier time fully saturating a belt. And you can see the belt here is fully saturated. All the inputs coming in, all the outputs going out and the amounts consumed and produced, 60 green circuits produced per second, 60 iron consumed, and 90 copper plates consumed. Before diving into the final stage of the green circuit build, I'd like to take a moment to thank all the patron supporters who make it possible for me to make videos like this. If you want to support the channel and the work I do here, then pledging on Patreon is a great way to support. Thank you very much for that. The final update is, of course, building it up to be using blue belts. Now this is a quite an upgrade actually, because as you can see here, this entire space here is used and only producing, or it is producing 60 per second. So if you want to make it, make it 90 per second, which corresponds to two blue belts outbound, you're gonna have to extend it by 50% and then change the blue belts. You can of course do this, but as we are going to blue belts, we are talking about sort of in game and we have all the techs available. So that's probably a good time to start making some changes. And that means including modules and beacons because with modules and beacons involved, you can actually lower the amount of copper being required for a build that produces more at the expense of modules, beacons, and of course, a lot of power. So the interesting thing is the build becomes much smaller as we upgrade. And I'm just gonna go make some changes to this build manually. And then you can see how it pans out. The first thing we need to do is cut it down to size and then we have to remove some of the middle assemblers because at this point the ratio is three copper wires to two, two circuit builds. However, when you add full beacons and modules, the ratio changes to being very close to one to one ratio. So let's make some adjustment. Now I have made the stripping down of the build that we need to do. The reason, as you can see, I have taken these out. The reason why is because I need modules in these location. The reason why I have taken out the power poles as well is because I also need modules in these locations. Because a module here will hit four different assemblers, which is good. And a module here will hit four different assemblers. Now in order for me to take out the power pole that was positioned here, I need to make room for new power poles. And that's gonna be in the middle. So at this point, we can do an upgrade 
A very important thing is that we're right now using blue assemblers. They are simply not fast enough for our build, so that needs to be upgraded. Let's get all the way over there to make sure that everything gets upgraded too. Blue belts, green assemblers, green inserters, and yellow assemblers. Good thing we're not colorblind. That's uh, there's too many colors. Mark three belts, stack inserters, and assembly machine three. Yes. So at this point, we can now take our last blueprint. And if I've done things correctly, it should just tile in here. Fingers crossed. There. However, one thing that isn't working, unfortunately, is the productivity modules. You can't put productivity modules, or blueprints will not put productivity modules into entities already placed on the map. So I have to do that manually. And this tiny little build, it's not actually very big. You can see how fast it moves. And it's now producing, as you can see here, fully compressed belts, fully compressed blue belts outbound. Let's look at the actual metrics here. It is producing 90 per second. However, this is very interesting. It's only using 64 iron plates per second. Now remember the larger red belt build was using 60 iron per second. So we're only like using a tiny bit more iron and the previous build was using 90 copper per second. This one is using only 69 copper per second. So we've actually, decrease the amount of copper and only slightly increase the amount of iron and then we've now added 50% extra productivity outbound however at the expense of very uh, very expensive modules and uh, a lot of power so definitely this is later on and you can build as many as you like of this however just remember that it's actually consuming quite a bit of it's still consuming quite a bit of copper and uh, an iron and there you have it that's the final upgrade of the green circuit build and this is bringing us basically to the end of this tutorial. As you can see, we now have scalable green circuits for the very earliest, earliest time you unlock the science and then scaling up to what I would call late game in a more bus based build. As always, all of the blueprints are available in this blueprint book that I have made available in the link in the description below. If you have comments to these builds, improvements, ideas, maybe even errors, you never know, then uh, hit the comment section below. That's why it's there. If you have made it this far into the video, then my guess is you have liked what you are watching or maybe have fallen asleep. But in any case, hit the like button, share the video, commenting on it. It shows me and it shows the YouTube algorithm that this is a worthwhile video and shows me that you want to see more of this kind of thing. And if you feel that I've earned your subscription, then thank you very much for that. And also, if you want more Factorio content, then do check out my Twitch channel. I'm streaming live Let's Plays on Twitch. It happens Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Central European time. And it's over at twitch.tv slash Nilos. Link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay effective.